We are live. All right. Let's see. My video is starting. Oh, yeah, that means live. it's time for you to do the intro, mate. Tell everybody who right. this is that they're watching Dang. down down here. All right, I'm live over here too. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds All good. Right. So we're back. You ready? We're here. All right. We're back with another episode of Get Some Fire Live with Brian and Sam, and tonight's special guest is Christian uh, Blackwell, and she is a mortgage powerhouse out of South Carolina. Wait until you hear her cool accent. We got a battle of the accents here tonight. And she sounds like she's from a movie. That's right. I think you sound like you're from a movie. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> I don't imitate your accent. That's just mean. <laughs> All right, so keep got, going, Brian. We got uh, heavy accents you, tonight. So, uh, so uh, Kristen, she um, she's a branch manager of a, a mortgage operation out of South Carolina, and then she's also partners in another uh, separate mortgage lending uh, place, where she's got five uh, agents that work under her doing mortgages, and um, she's also uh, a mom of a beautiful five-year-old girl, and uh, moms know how to get stuff done. So. Uh, that's why they take over the world. <laughs> That's right. One learn at a time. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I've been in the mortgage industry for a few years now, and I started out as a loan officer assistant and made my way to a loan officer, then up to a branch manager. Decided that I wanted a little more control and uh, started a little broker shop that I uh, co-partner with called Buyer's Choice Lending that's also based out of South Carolina. And so I have a broker shop, and then I run five branches for Southwest Funding as well. Awesome, awesome. So you're a slacker. <laughs> no, just a little bit. I'm just very lazy. Very, very lazy. lazy. <laughs> very lazy. <laughs> that's great. I like um, to watch Yellowstone and sit on my couch. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we do, right? <laughs> What's a TV? So, um, so um, obviously, this has been a really busy time for you guys. Uh, with the rates low, I'm sure the, the loans are going like crazy. What kind of uh, volume are you seeing these days? It's been crazy with the refinances, with rates low. Um, everyone's wanting to refinance because it's historically low. Um, on top of that, we've got a lot of purchases. The inventory has been a little bit lower than normal uh, because everyone is wanting to buy right now with rates being low. So you're seeing a little bit less inventory, a lot of buyers out there ready to shop. Um, so it's thing, been yeah. very competitive out there. Yeah, yeah. And the rates are starting to creep up now, right? Where uh, where's the thirty year at now? They're up in the threes now, right? On uh, the threes now, yes. So there are no, they're not really the two. There are some twos out there, but typically you're going to see the threes for the average home buyer. So. Which is still great compared. to, I think my parents' mortgage was like fourteen percent when they bought back in the eighties. So that was oh, like absolutely. Insane. So we're, we're still good, <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah. So um, where do you think it's going? You think the rates are going to creep up or? Uh, a great question. I do think the rates are going to slightly go up a little bit more for now. I don't think they're going to raise too much. I don't think you're going to see the fives or sixes anytime soon. I know a lot of people have come to me and asking, hey, are the rates going to be back in the 14%? Are we going to have this huge market crash? I don't think that's what we're going to see in the upcoming years. I think you're going to see it kind of slightly go up and I think it's going to kind of stay for a little while. I don't think that's going to go back down. I think that we're going to see consistently go up a little bit higher, but I think that where we're at right now, we're going to see it kind of stay for a while. Oh, so. so yeah, that's uh, it's good news for us in the real estate world because people start panicking when the rates come up. So. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what um what kind of advice can you put out there for everyone that uh, looking to buy a house? Like, what what are the biggest problems that people are having? Obviously, you know, they go out and buy cars right before they go get a mortgage and all the madness that goes on that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> goodness gracious it's a great question brian so the biggest challenges that i've seen in the mortgage and in mortgage industry in the last few years is that people do not understand the urgency or the importance even um in bringing their documents to the table at pre-qualification so when you're out there guys and you're wanting to shop for a house and it's super exciting because you get to go look at these different houses the biggest thing that you need to understand is you can't really get that house unless you have the correct documentation up front. And you can either set yourself up for success or you can set yourself up for a really bumpy ride and it's gonna cause you frustrated and stressed out. So essentially what I like to set everyone up with is success. <laughs> and to do that, you wanna make sure you're getting the right documentation. And not just whenever you see a house down the street that's for sale. 
You don't want to just say, hey, oh my gosh, this house is perfect for me. I want to all of a sudden jump into the mortgage process. It's not like I see a house, I go put an offer in, and then it's mine. Uh, that's not the climate that we're in. There's multiple offers on most houses these days. So you want to be smart about this. Um, you want to make sure that you have the correct documentation. Simple documents such as your pay stubs for the last 30 days, your W-2s for the last two years, tax returns, I'd go ahead and get those ready in case you're self-employed, um, ID, social security card. Um, if you're self-employed, make sure you've paid your taxes up. That's a big one. That's that's a very big one that I see. Mm -hmm. um, especially in this market, a lot of conventional buyers are those that worked really hard to make sure that their credit is where it needs to be, but you also see a lot more self-employed borrowers there. Mm -hmm. So having your tax returns paid full to the IRS and making sure you have that documentation is important to set yourself up for success um, for the mortgage process. Um, and then also bank statements for your last 60 days, all the pages and the blank ones. All right, and don't make any big deposits, right? And don't make any, yeah, yeah, don't make any yeah, big moves great. without uh, talking to your mortgage person. We see that a lot. I recently so we're the had, professional. Yeah, we, don't we had, do that. You know, don't go buy your car. Yeah. Don't put your job. <laughs> um, make sure you that if you you're, know. yeah, don't open any new lines of credit without speaking to us first. You kind of want to freeze your credit picture once your mortgage loan officer has pulled hmm. your credit. And you want to keep it there through the whole loan process. Yep. I know that it gets closes. really exciting and you <laughs> see that furniture at Ashley Furniture and you want to go buy it for your, for your new living room. Yeah. But you really want to wait until you close on your house. I know Black Friday is coming up. I've heard a lot of times we're like, there's furniture sales. There's there's sales on stoves and refrigerators. Hold off, friends. Yes. Make sure you wait till you close in your house before you start opening new lines of credit. And don't deposit cash from the holidays into your bank account if it's large sums of money at once. Always talk to your, your loan officer or the loan processor before you start putting large deposits of cash into your account. Because a lot of times if you're using an FHA loan, USDA or VA, even conventional, you have to source your deposits. So we wanna make sure that we're able to do so. So before you start changing the picture that you have given your mortgage loan professional, you wanna make sure you talk to them first. We're basically like your lawyer. We'll help you get out of everything, but we need to know what's going on first. So totally. we, we have to properly launder our drug money. Exactly. So exactly. That's correct. Uncle Obviously. Sam wants to know about every dollar we make, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, they got to get their help piece. Help me help you. <laughs> yeah, they got to get their piece, you know. Um, that's right. <laughs> I just recently had a deal. We were a week before closing, and they went and took a um, it was some kind of a, like line of credit or something like that. Like, all of a sudden, they did the last like sweep to kind of like clear the close, and it was like, what the hell is this? And he's like, oh, well, what's the big deal? What the, because everything's already approved already. I said, no, it's not. No. <laughs> so uh, hey, Maybe his realtor didn't tell him. Yeah. No, we kind of told what? him. Or maybe his lender didn't tell him. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> no, we, and this was a tough deal. It was a deal that we jumped through a lot of hoops to get to make happen. And uh, just when we thought we were through all the hoops, he threw another hoop at us. And it was like, oh, come on. But we got it done. Um, and that's Good. important so with using um, what I call a direct lender, like, you know, someone like you that's not a big bank. Um, you know, I find when you use the big banks, you know, they don't, a lot of them I don't think work on commission. I think it's just they work on salary and they don't care mm -hmm. if the deal closes. They don't care, to, you know, they won't go the extra mile for you. Um, I always tell everyone go for the local lender, the local person that you have their cell phone number that you can talk to them straight and they'll tell you straight what's going on. And, you know, in the ninth hour when the deal's about to, blow apart, you have someone to call with to fix the deal rather than the big banks where they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll get back to you next week. Um, I had one of the big banks on closing day, we're doing a walkthrough and they uh, basically said, yeah, we're not ready to close. Said, what do you mean we're not ready to close? So these people were selling and they were buying another house like same day, like closing one in the morning and buying the other in the afternoon. Close. And they're like, oh yeah, we're not ready to close today. And like, what do you mean we're not ready to close today? You're a giant bank. You gave us clear to close. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're not done with the paperwork yet. Like, uh, like they're buying another house this afternoon. They need to sell this house. And a lot of screaming and yelling and cursing and you know calling managers and all this other stuff and we pulled it off in the last minute we went up closing the first deal at like three o'clock and a second deal at like four o'clock wow that was supposed That's to close like 10 and one <laughs> but, plus using a lender or broker we're on available on the weekends and at night exactly. whereas if you use a big bank you're yeah. only going to get them during banking hours yeah, so yeah. so uh, i tell that all the time everyone thinks so oh, i got my money in this big bank and oh they're going to give me this great rate or whatever and a lot of times the rate's not great uh i know a lot of times the lenders you know i deal with up here in new york they they beat the rates usually you know match them or beat them and you get the service that you don't get so i think it's yep. really important 
Obviously, pre-approvals are real important. Don't start looking at houses until you have a pre-approval in your hand. That's and not some pre-qualification nonsense. A pre-approval, something that's real. You know, I had someone come to me once with some phony letter, and I was like, "How'd you get this?" Oh, we told the guy how much money we make and what we think our credit scores are, and they gave us this letter. And I'm like, "What? Like they didn't verify anything?" So of course, when it came time to actually verify, you know, they had stuff on their, you know, in their history that wasn't good, and they weren't qualified for as much as they thought they were, and the house of their dreams they weren't able to get. So I tell everyone, before you even start looking, you know, go get pre-qualified. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to use that bank. You can still switch banks once you get pre-qualified. Obviously, if you build a relationship with that bank, you're going to want to work with them, but you're not locked into that bank. So the first thing you do when you want to look at houses is go, first of all, talk to your real estate agent and find out who their preferred lender is because I deal with people and Sam deals with people every day that I know that, you know, they're going to close the deal. If they tell me that this deal is going to happen, it's going to happen. Um, you know, that's why we work with them. And then because of the volume that we do with them, they jump through hoops for us, especially. So if they're, if you're a one-time mm -hmm. deal, they don't care about the repeat business. If it's someone that, you know, I give, you know, 10 deals a month to, you know, they're going to bend over backwards to make sure my deal goes through and to make sure my clients are happy. Uh, and that really goes to all, all aspects of the, uh, you know, the process, you know, the attorneys, oh, you know, I recommend my attorneys you guys don't use attorneys down there for the most part. We, we have attorneys on the buyer side. No, we actually, side. we do in South Carolina. Oh, you actually yeah, do, do use attorneys Yeah, we there. do. Yeah. We're not a title company state. We're a lawyer. Oh, wow. All right. I thought we were the only ones up in New York that did that madness. So, uh, so, you know, so they go hire some attorney out of the phone book. The guy doesn't care. You know, the attorneys I use, I deal with them all the time. So again, I have their cell phone number. I can call them at nine o'clock at night and say, Hey, you need to fix this. You know, an attorney that doesn't know me doesn't care, and they're not going to jump for me. So I tell everyone all the time, use the recommended vendors of your real estate agent. You know, find a qualified real estate agent and then use their vendors because those are the people they have relationships with. Those are the people that they know, love, and trust, and they know that will get the deals done. So yep, teamwork makes the dream work for sure. It's super, super important, important to yeah. work with. You know, a lot of times, you know, no one's talking to each other. You know, I get my, my attorney on the phone with the lender, and they all talk, and you know, um, and my lenders up here in New York, when we put an offer in, my lender calls the listing agent and tells her that this is a qualified buyer. You know, we all say when we put an offer in, um, in this competitive market, you're building a resume. So That's right. the best resume goes on top of the pile and, and obviously gets the best offer. So if you got a couple offers that are similar, the one that's got the, the highest credit scores, got the most money in the bank, it's got the biggest down payment, it's got the best, you know, best lender. And then the lender calls instead of and says how great they instead are. Instead of a prequel, yep. yeah, all so those things. When you build a big resume for your client, and then you go in with that instead of, hey, you know, this is a half-ass pre-approval, and you know, I'm not going to give you anything else. If they got an 800 credit score, I'm telling that agent they got 800 credit scores. This is a great buyer. And then I have the the mortgage you know professional call up and and verify that. Yep, this deal is not a problem. They're very qualified, and we'll close in 30 days. And that, that helps you win deals. That's how I get deals accepted. Um, where you know other agents are like, how do you get your deals accepted? I was like, because like we go, we go ahead with a big Above resume. and beyond, we go that extra step. Yeah, Absolutely, exactly, it's important, exactly. especially in this market with double, you know, with all these offers going on. It's important who you work with. And it's important that you trust who you work with, and it's important that those two people are moving together on the same team uh, to to make sure that you're closing on time, efficiently, effectively, and that all parties are given the strongest offer possible. So, amen. Definitely. definitely. What do you got, Sam? Oh, you know, I was just uh, thinking how well Christian was doing. Being this is her first ever podcast yeah, interview. Right. Ah, it right. is. It's so true. So, <laughs> I'm so, so nervous. Christian came to me and said, um, uh, she liked how I went live, and she didn't know how she could go live. And I said, easy, going live tomorrow night. So this is how it works. So we sink or swim around here. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just yeah. keep swimming. Just, just keep, keep swimming. swimming. So we met at uh, Apex Live. <laughs> 